Amen. I love those rhythms. Felt like I was back in the French Quarter, Bourbon Street, Preservation Hall, Nolens. Love that. Love the rhythm of the Spirit, the rhythm of God's people. This is the first Sunday of Pride Tide, and our theme for Pride Tide is Rising True. Thanks to Amy for this new uh, banner here, Rising True. During the season of Pride Tide, we'll be looking at various rising true moments in Scripture. And today we see a rising true moment for Nicodemus. Now Nicodemus was a powerful leader in his time. He was part of the educated elite. He was a Pharisee serving on the Sanhedrin. Now if he was part of MCC, that means that he would be on the Council of Elders or the governing board. If he was in the US government, it means that uh, he would be part of the presidential cabinet. He is someone who had worked hard to build his image, someone who had worked hard to build his powerful identity. He is someone who had worked hard to get everything under control. He had every reason to be proud, proud of all that he had achieved. So his identity was one of respect and one of authority. He loved having it all lined up, having everything in order, just about perfect, until he met Jesus. <laughs> and then everything began to shift. Everything began to move. Everything began to become disrupted. Our scripture today says that he came to Jesus at night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could do these miraculous signs that you do unless God is with him. Now we see that Nicodemus is still focused on the external. He's talking about what Jesus does rather than who Jesus is. He is drawn to those external miraculous signs. But Jesus responds this way, Nicodemus, I assure you, unless someone is born anew, it's not possible to see God's realm. Jesus continues, God's Spirit blows wherever it wishes. You hear its sound, but you don't know where it comes from or where it's going. It's the same with everyone who is born of the Spirit. The Spirit blows wherever it wishes. That means it blows beyond your preconceived notions. It blows beyond your control. It blows through and beyond everything you thought you had neatly pinned down. It blows beyond order. You can't make it happen. You can't force it. And yet it blows. It moves. Nicodemus, who had it all figured out, is trying to figure that out. <laughs> How can one be born again? How can one be born anew? How can one go back into the womb? And Jesus is saying to him, you may identify as a male, but you too have a womb. There's an embryonic place in you beyond your control. A place that perhaps you didn't know was there. Are you ready to go there? To a place deep inside of you and be born again, be born anew? Wrap your head around that. <laughs> now Jesus is not asking Nicodemus to put aside his education. He's not asking Nicodemus to give up his Jewishness, his beautiful Jewishness. He, he's not asking Nicodemus to put aside all that he has learned. In fact, he's not asking Nicodemus to give up his identity. He's simply inviting Nicodemus to take the best of his head, all that he has learned, and enmesh it with the best of his heart. Nicodemus had explored the places of his head, 
Now it was time for him to explore brand new territory so that the best of his mind would become even more alive, more in tune. Jesus is inviting Nicodemus to rise true, to rise to his truest self, his true gifts, his true abilities, his truest and deepest identity. A new place, a place of transformation. Jesus is inviting Nicodemus to touch something new, a deeper truth, beyond all the truth he had previously known. And after Nicodemus meets Jesus, there is no turning back. He's born again, and again, and again, and again. And Nicodemus, in being born again, rises true, and more true, and even more true. What a beautiful and bold invitation. Nicodemus rising true to another place, a spirit place, a place where the eternally living realm of God transports him beyond all previous expectations and limitations. Nicodemus is rising true not only to the power in himself, but the power beyond himself. And that, too, is our invitation to experience power beyond ourselves, power we cannot control, to be born again in a new place where the Spirit leads us beyond and through. My prayer for us during this season of Pride Tide is that our hearts will touch sacred pride, holy pride, that we will rise to our truest and deepest and most fabulous and buoyant selves. You are a people with a purpose true and a purpose bold. Continue to rise true, awesomely and wonderfully made. Now, how does one know whether one has risen to one's truest self? I think one sign is courage. Rising true means we stand in the power. We stand in the knowledge of who we are as created by God. And from that place, we are no longer threatened by outside voices. So, was Nicodemus just born again for that moment? Did he just rise true for that moment with Jesus and then go back into his closet? <laughs> we see in the rest of Scripture that Nicodemus not only rose true for that moment, but continued to rise true. We see later in Scripture that Nicodemus faced an incredible challenge from his colleagues on the Sanhedrin, from his colleagues on the Council of Elders and the Governing Board. And we see him in that moment rising with true courage. When the debate about Jesus is rising fierce, and when Jesus is under attack, Nicodemus has the courage to rise true and speak truth. He asks this question to his colleagues. Does our law condemn someone without first giving him a fair hearing and learning something about him? There in John 7, Nicodemus is inviting his colleagues on the Sanhedrin to look deeper into this Jesus. They're only seeing Jesus as a threat, someone who is threatening the order that they so carefully established. And Nicodemus is saying, look deeper. I know this one. I've learned something about him. I've given him a fair hearing. How about you? Come on, y'all, take a breath. And this one who you are condemning might just change your life. Nicodemus rose true and rose true and rose true. And then later in the book of John, he actually puts his very life at risk physically as he tends to the body of Jesus after Jesus is removed from the cross in John 19. Scripture says Nicodemus, who first came to Jesus under the cloak of night, brought over 100 pounds of myrrh and ointments for Jesus' burial. Together they took Jesus' body and wrapped him in linens 
soaked in essential oils and spices according to the Jewish burial customs. By boldly and publicly ministering to the body of Jesus, Nicodemus was putting his own life at risk. He could have been arrested at that moment for associating with this one who had been crucified and condemned. And yet his love was truer, his love was stronger. He rose true, and he ministered with love. After meeting Jesus, he saw life in a whole new way. The best of his head with the best of his heart coming together to live a life that was true and powerful. Like Nicodemus, we too are called to rise true through a new way of listening and seeing, a new way of believing, by exercising new courage to opening ourselves to that spirit that cannot be controlled, that will transform us at any given moment. Nicodemus had a moment of rising true. And we have those Nicodemus moments in our lives. Those lives when we have a conversation with someone maybe at night or maybe in the morning that helps us to see life in a whole new way. For a moment, I invite you to think of those in your life who have brought you to a Nicodemus moment. Who are the people in your life who have asked you some of the toughest questions that once you've worked through them have made you stronger and truer? I think that Jesus absolutely respected and believed in Nicodemus at that moment. And he saw something in Nicodemus that Nicodemus didn't see himself. Who has seen something in you that you didn't see in yourself that helped you to rise true? Who has invited you to give up all the preconceived ideas you've had and try on something new? Who has taken your everyday shoes and offered you a set of glittery hills? Who has invited you to live with that buoyancy and that boldness and that courage? Who has made you truer and stronger? We indeed, like Nicodemus, are born again and again and again. And we rise true again and again and again. We rise true every time we claim our own voice and freely share our voice with the world. We rise true every time we live with our whole hearts and our whole heads in a world that's splitting apart. We rise true every time we stand for equality and justice. We rise true every time we work for fair education for everybody. We rise true every time we offer powerful and prophetic witness. We rise true as the beloved and called and bold people of God. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So be born again every night and every day and every morning. In the spirit of the prophet, we are invited to hear the prophet Ezekiel who says, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will make you more true. I will make you more real. We are all Nicodemus with those Nicodemus moments. And MCC was created by one who had a Nicodemus moment. And in fact, many Nicodemus moments. I'm thinking of our founder, the Reverend Elder Troy Perry, one of our Nicodemuses. Tuesday nights, we're studying his book, Don't Be Afraid Anymore. And again, one of the signs of being born again and born anew and rising true is living with courage. Troy Perry writes in his book, My journey toward maturity was beset with ignorance and doubt before I could understand that truly fear is the greatest enemy. He goes back and describes some of the moments in his life that were particularly transformative. Troy Perry has an interesting ecumenical religious background. He was a Baptist, he was a Pentecostal, Assembly of God, Church of God, Holiness. 
There were all sorts of influences on his life, but someone who was Jesus to him and led him to a Nicodemus moment was his Aunt Lizzie Smithy. And he writes this about his aunt. It was in Aunt Lizzie Smithy's home during a prayer meeting when she came to me while I was kneeling and in the midst of all our friends and relatives placed her strong hands behind my head and then held the side of my face tightly against hers. My heart raced as I listened to her deliver a prophecy. In a clear voice, Aunt Lizzie announced that she had been given a most certain knowledge that I was called to reveal and preach the will of God. She said, Henceforth, you, Troy Perry, shall also be of such an understanding. <laughs> Clearly, his call to ministry was outside of his control. Aunt Lizzie was fully in, in, in charge of that at that moment and the spirit working through her. Now, he faced many, many tough moments after that where his courage and his life was tested. Later, as he was tossed out of churches where he was pastoring because he was gay, he went through a deep depression. He, he lost his family. And he actually came to a moment where he attempted suicide. Thankfully, his roommate found him and, and saved him. And Troy Perry realized, as he says in his book, that he was saved for a purpose and for a reason. Now, this was back in 1968, so the idea of there being a church where all people would be welcomed was, was unimaginable. And yet, Troy Perry felt in his heart that God was calling him to rise true and to create a church that would help people to rise true to their deepest selves. And so, Troy Perry prayed about this. And now he writes about how his call deepens and extends. In the sort of talking I do, I said, Lord, you called me to preach. Now I think I've seen my niche in the ministry. We need a church. Not a homosexual church, but a special church that will reach out to the lesbian and gay community. Oh God, we need a church for people in trouble and for people who just want to be near you. So God, if you want such a church started, and you seem to keep telling me that you do, well then, just let me know when. <laughs> Whereupon, Troy writes, I received my answer to an impossible dream. A still small voice in my mind's ear spoke, and the voice said, now. And so on October 6, 1968, 50 years this fall, Reverend Elder Troy Perry rose true. Rose true to his deepest self and his deepest calling. And because of him and his witness and his Nicodemus moments, we too, as the people of God, are called to rise true. Rise true to our truest and most courageous self. We know who the enemy is, and the enemy is fear. So may we rise true and boldly live the buoyant lives that we are called to be. The Spirit will blow where the Spirit wishes to blow beyond our control. Get ready to go inside, to be born again and again and again and again, and to rise true and more true and more true and more true. Amen and amen. And so we offer today these deep waters of baptism, waters that call us to fullness of life and true life. We also offer for you here today this oil and laying on of hands in ancient times, the balm in Gilead, the presence of the Spirit. During this time of response, I invite you to think about those who have led you to Nicodemus moments. Or think about the Nicodemus moments that are making you who you are today. Or maybe you're hungering for a Nicodemus moment. This is your time with God to listen, to have a conversation, to invite God to talk back 
as you talk back to God. Please come and rise for this moment.